Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a lot to cover, no fancy intro today. 4457, we said we wanted to see the 443375 hold. We talked about that level when. We talked about this level this morning. Now there's a bunch of levels in here and we're gonna get to all of them, but I wanna point out what I think are the most critical things right now and I want to jump right into it. See how we held this level? See how we held that breakout? One, two, three down. Now we're forming a hammer. The important thing about this hammer to me is the fact that we are up right there more than 50% on the bar. Now, are we over the open? No, we are not over the open. It's still red. We still have issues. We still have a declining well, we're not declining yet, but we are under the 55. We are closing below the 12 and the 22, and they look like they're gonna start pointing down. Something else that we have to watch when looking at the futures market here that I think is very important. Here we are with the futures. RSI is breaking 50. So I, I wanna watch that. I wanna be very cognizant of that. And that's definitely important to me. Now, if I look at this, I would suggest that it's pretty clear that we're making a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And that's what I keep being told over and over again. I keep hearing it. We're making, that's what we're doing. I don't know that. And what I'm going to suggest is instead of just thinking that that's what's going to happen, what if we just get into some kind of trading range in here? What if we just start finding levels and we just start trading around those levels for a period of time as we digest this move? And people are saying, well, that can't happen. Why not? Stock space before they go higher. So, so does the market. We could just sit in these ranges and trade in ranges for a while. We don't necessarily have to completely crash or rally. And that's really a big misnomer that's going on right now. If you drill into the hourly and we take a look at this, let's look at that hourly chart. Now we talked about these levels earlier today. We talked about them obviously going all the way back here. And when we started to break the head and shoulders, this neckline, and you can see how it's all kind of playing out very similarly to where we are now. But you see you're getting up to the neckline, kind of tried to get up there, but not really. But what we are doing while this is going on, if we take a look at the ES, you're still hitting higher, higher lows. I mean, you're definitely still hitting higher lows. It's, it's really kind of important to look at. And we're going to talk about why this is probably happening through smart money, dumb money, and the pull call ratio here in a second. But I think this is a really important distinction. A bunch of names we'll get into at the end, specifically Apple, NVIDIA. But I, I want to get into the put call ratio and what's going on there. And then the, one way that I use it that I think people don't. But anyway, you see these levels? So you can see kind of how we're setting up, aren't we? And then what are we doing? We're making higher highs. Well, am I supposed to get upset because we were here and we didn't take out the low? Well, not really. We're still not there. Th does this look like something that I need to jump in and buy? Not particularly either. You could even make the argument you're looking at a huge head and shoulders versus that mini head and shoulders. And that's what we just were talking about. Even if you drop this on a four hour, that becomes even more glaring, doesn't it? That that could be, wow, that's definitely a head and shoulders. It's not a head and shoulders until this right breaks down here. And I'm just gonna say it again. I'm not gonna be there for that. So even if it is from here down, we have to break through this for that to be a head and shoulders. Well, that's still uh, th two, three percent from there. I'm not going to be around for that if that's going to happen. What you want to do is just use that lower low and then kind of go from there and see where we're, we're going to go. If we were going to break down, I can't think of a better day to break down than today. I do understand where we are with the moving averages. We saw what happened today with the NASDAQ and we can take a look at the NQ here on the four and see the same thing. We have that left shoulder head and that right shoulder. I think this is a really important distinction for what's going on out there right now. Now, if we drop our line in right here, you can kind of just get a better sense of it. Do I think we're gonna break that? I have absolutely no clue. What I do know is what we were looking at yesterday worked fairly well, and I'll walk through it again. One of the core things that we were talking about yesterday, let's get rid of this nine EMA, was these levels and how these levels are playing out and that we were oversold and that the, since we were oversold coming into it, chances of some kind of bounce were pretty good. So even if we are going to roll, which let's, let's be honest about it, if we're looking at the NASDAQ right now and you start watching them work, walk us down, this does not look like something that is really setting up to go higher. But there are some pockets here that we have to watch. See how they're fanning us down? That doesn't mean that you can't bounce up to here, bounce up to 15.4, bounce up to one of these necklines, resistance spots, and then break down. And that's more or less what probably is going to, you know, at least you're going to test it and then bounce. But we're grossly oversold here today. And people say, you know, RSI doesn't work. I would beg to differ. If you go and take a look at these levels and you see how they're acting. And again, the tool and whose hands it's in. If you start looking at anything that's below here, you bounced. 
You might not have gone up, but you sure didn't drop. In other words, you can see from here over for, it took over a week or two just to work that off and start getting the overbought's again, luring people in with hopes and dreams and then smashing them, right? So it took a little bit of time there. So that's definitely something that we have to take into account. Now, if we drill into this on the daily, one thing that I think we should all take away is just understanding again, what's happening here on the NQ. Now, if we look at this just on the daily and we drop in our moving averages, what's happening here? Well, this is something I'm not crazy about either. We're below the 55, we're below the 12. Well, we're sitting on the 12 and we held the 22. But I don't really like crossing here. I, I think you have to go on two assumptions here. And this is where my head is right now because we're also setting up to break the 50. We're either setting up to base and you could argue that this is the handle that it's forming and we could have that debate. We'll talk about it on Saturday. We're either setting up to base for a period of time, which you're gonna have certain names move and we're gonna get into what those names look like at the end At the end, after I go through put call and uh, smart money, dumb money, which I think is more important, or we're forming a head and shoulders. I think that they're the two premises that we have to work on right now. We're either going to base or we're setting up a head and shoulders. Either way, we're in an area where based upon that, where we wanna just be, hitting singles, pulling a little money out, and then seeing if those trades are gonna work. Now there are pockets that are just look fairly good and we'll get to that. But first let's look at smart money, dumb money. One of the things I get asked in the comments a lot is to just follow up on past things that we've gone over on like Saturday's video, which is everyone knows these are all linked together. We do not call this smart money. We do not call this dumb money. We call this institutional and we call this retail. Very important for what we're about to go over now. We talked about on Saturday how we're seeing dumb money start to come back in the market and we're starting to see a rotation down on quote smart money or institutional money. We talked about what happened the last couple times that these types of spots hit and how it actually ends some kind of bottom. For what reason, we're not really clear on, but we went back and looked at it over 20 years. And what I wanna do is just really follow up on what's transpired since these are starting to get further apart from one another, which they are, we're starting to see the market kind of hang in there a little bit. We're trending down, but we're not really breaking. And I think there's an important distinction here. We're not really falling apart. We're seeing the sediment change a little bit with the dollar, but this is not really affecting us as much as one might think. Now, if we drill into this a little bit more, we can actually see how the dumb money is starting to roll back down but at the same time, we can also see how smart money is still pointing down or institutional money. And what we always notice is that all our peaks are when, all the peaks are when dumb money or retail is fully invested. And that kind of makes a little bit of sense. They're usually a faster trigger. And then these bottoms, some, sometimes they're near at a trough level when they're under invested, but not always. What you notice is that the bottoms, the true bottoms are always when we're here. Now the question is, is that because that the, we're here on the bottom and that's why? Or is it because the spread is so great? In other words, is it the differentiation of the spread that's making that happen? And I'm not sure, meaning that if institutions are fully invested and retail's not, that marks a bottom. Whereas you can see that when retail's here and institutions are there, that seems to mark a top. So the top seems pretty clearer to me. I mean, you guys can comment below, but the top seems much clearer to me than determining where the bottom is. What I find interesting is there's an extreme reading here. Uh, I think that the best thing for us to do in looking at this is to understand that the extreme readings are really when we're this far apart. And they're the ones that we should probably pay more attention to. What is starting to happen here is we're starting to get an extreme reading. Now, I don't know if that means that this is going to drop and of course this is not extreme yet we just bounced off of this right here as we talked about but this is kind of interesting to me that retail starting to drop and we're starting to see the smart money or institutions come in as well now if we look at it from that perspective and then just zoom out and look at this on a 10-year and we talked about the times that we saw this happen and the size of these gates and you're seeing these gates right here and how they marked very particular levels over 10 years. We marked these levels off before. I'm sure you remember this and can see it, but I just think it's worth noting. For example, you can see right here, that level and how that transpired. We can see here and how that transpired. So I think that that's really important for us to just note for a minute. If we drill into this and just go on a six, you can see the spread and how once that spread widened, we were fine. And when it got tight, 
that's when we started running into the area. So there's something about the widening of the spread too that we need to pay attention to. And what I wanted to do with this, frankly, was just follow up on it and say, this is what's happening, this is where we're at, and this is what we should focus on. In other words, here's where we were last time. Let's make that an arrow, it's starting to bother me. So here's where we were last time, and then we started having a spread. Here's where we were last time, and we started having a, when did we top out? When we had a huge spread. Now, people say oh, it's not that simple. I'm not saying life is that simple. I'm saying that this is what happened last time and that the market decided to go higher last time. To ignore the same exact situation and say this time is different is probably not the way to go about this. It's probably something to look at and say, okay, well, we did just have a period of underperformance. Is that due to this? And now what do we do with that? In front of us is equity put call ratio detrended. I want to be very specific about this. Now, again, I get asked a lot to follow up on ideas that we go over. One of the ideas I went over yesterday was just the equity put call ratio. And I was showing how we were at an extreme level. Now, why this is important is not just because we're going to go through the put call ratio, but we're going to follow up on what we discussed yesterday, but we're going to add something to it so people can understand the significance. Detrended means exactly what you think it means without trend. Let me explain. One of the most important things to do is to understand exactly what you're looking at and understand how it's calculated. Every oscillator, everything that you use, if you understand how it's calculated and the methodology behind it, you'll know how to utilize it. So here it just tells you C description for equity put call ratio. I'm going on the assumption that you know what a put call ratio is. Puts divided by calls gives you a number, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as stated in the description, put call ratios tend to move in trends along with the underlying market. For instance, the mean value of the 10 day average of the equity ratio from 97 to 2000 was 0.24. All right. So they're giving you that range. OK. And then they're saying from this range for those three years was 0.6. It's a 38 percent difference. So if you have a heightened level, then if you're at 0.65, well, 0.65 means more here than it certainly does here, doesn't it? Okay, so what they're doing is they're explaining the differentiation between di varying periods of time and how it might be heightened or lessened at a specific time and why 0.65 here could be significant and why here it's nothing. This is significant and throws off our views of what extreme is and what is not, right? We just explained that. Very important distinction. To compensate for these secular trends, this indicator takes into account the 10 day average put call ratio and divides it by the 26 week average. It takes the current 10 day average and divides it by the 26 week average. So now we know what we're looking at. This puts most readings in the context of those seen in the past six months. So you get a six month gauge versus something that could be skewed as if you're seeing up here. Hence, they are taking out the trend. This virtually eliminates the bias of put call equity ratio exhibited depending on what type of market we're in. Whether you're in a bull market or bear market, doesn't matter. This gives you a better clear picture of the underlying sentiment of option traders, which is what you want to do. If the indicator is giving current reading of 20%, for example, that means the 10 day average is 20% greater than the average reading over the past six months. Okay. Very easy to understand the interpretation of this indicator, same as equity put call itself. The high readings show fear and are generally bullish for the market. Low readings in contrast show excessive optimism. All right. Now, I think it's very helpful to spend a minute or two on that explaining what these are. But again, I always appreciate your comments, letting me know if you think it's perp there's a purpose to it, if it's helpful or not. But what I want to show is this. We're detrended. We get that if we're above here, it's bullish because there's fear. Here we are. And the one thing that we're going to note is a couple things. Number one, we're here. Okay, so we are over, we are bullish. And you're gonna say, okay, that's great. We were here too, when we were significantly more here, weren't we? And we know what that marks, that December level right before January's turn. And then what happened from there over, the market ripped. All right, so we know how that played out, right? That peak, and then you went from there. And the cool thing about the peak is you just wait for the drop, right? When you start seeing that drop, you know you're gonna start going because they're just unwinding the hedges. Nonetheless, you can see these peaks here and you're like, well, that didn't really do anything. Well, the one thing you have to take into account when you're looking at context is, are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? Well, from here over, we were in a downtrend. Now I'm going on the, one big assumption here that we're going to stay in an uptrend or go flat. And when I start to explain this, all right, so if we start to look at this and say from this downtrend, did it help? Yeah, it marked bottoms, but you still kind of went nowhere, right? Cause we were in a downtrend. All right. So 
understand the premise of what I'm about to explain, understand that it's detrended, understand that it's that where we are, and understand that we are in an uptrend and we are not in a downtrend. All right, I hope that makes sense to everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay the past three years. And what I'm going to suggest is that we just look at every time that we were here and that we were in an uptrend over here. So there's only one time in this past three years that we were in an uptrend when we were up here and it's right here. And you can see very clearly from this little spot that that marks some kind of bottom in that area right in here. And we can see that, but that gives us one data point. So that's not really a lot, is it? So let's go out five and see if we can find something a little bit better. And so what we would do is just mark this off again and draw a line and say, okay, let's look for the uptrends. Well, here's an uptrend and that mark there. We know that this was the pandemic and I think we should really take out the pandemic here candidly because it was just so much fear. I just didn't know, but here's the uptrend. And then the question is, should we use this? Cause 1.7 trillion was injected in the market. So although it does fit my thesis, you have to take into account that all, all your data in this little area is completely corrupted, right? Because the Fed just injected so much capital. It's just really kind of corrupted. All right, so if we look at it from that perspective, let's say you go out 10 years. So now we take a look at a 10 year period. And all we want to do again is go here and just draw this line across and go, well, we have 19. We don't really have anything. You kind of have these little peaks here and you can see how that did mark bottoms, even though we rolled a year later. I'm not worried about the year I'm trying to get through the week. And then you can kind of see where we're at here and you see something very similar and then say, okay, well, how about if we just go out 20? Does that do anything? All right, well, that gives us a big data sample. So if we take a look at 20 and we take a look at where we're at right now and we draw a line across, a couple things will stick out to you, should stick out to you. Number one, we are not here that often that you are at this extreme of a reading. You could see the, the lines completely glaring here, I would think but I'll just point them out and I'll leave this line up for a second. Number one, you can see the great financial crisis. You can see the, the great financial crisis when they didn't know that they actually fixed it. You could see the pandemic and you could see a very recent level when they put that bottom in, in December with all that tax selling. And then you have these little moves in here in 03 when we went to Kuwait. Now these moves and looking at this, you'll see these little trough moves where you came down and held. They all mark bottoms when you're in this uptrend. And the other thing is you've only been here one, if you take out the extreme, like the pandemic or the great financial crisis in 20 years, and I know my line's not straight, but in 20 years, you've been here only a handful of times. And this is on a, just so we're clear again, what you're looking at and why I think it's significant and worth bringing up is this is a put call ratio and it's detrended. So as I showed yesterday and how we were at an extreme reading, this shows we're at an extreme reading if you take out all the trends. I hope that's helpful. Please let me know and comment below. We have a bunch of names to go over. We might as well start with the beast. Apple today with the gap down. This is exactly what you wanna see as a trader. So if you remember yesterday's video, I stated that we had puts actually coming into today. I'm gonna to walk you through exactly what we did with those puts and how we actually reversed the position and why we reversed the position. So before we get into that, we're just gonna talk about this and what's going on. We are below the 55, the 22 and the 12. So why in the world would you take a position? Well, the first thing that you should note is what happened today and that is an exhaustion move. The gap down off the open and then what happens? We close up. That's a clear sign of exhaustion. There is some rumors going on that what is happening in China, where they quote, are not allowed to bring these phones in, that that is overblown. I, I wanna be real clear about something that's going on and they're doing it. And I'm not saying that there's not validity to, to, to this. Okay, I, no one believed that WorldCom had issues or Enron had issues. And I'm not saying that Nvidia does, but we all know that FinTwit's going around and there's some issues now with NVIDIA where they're saying, oh, they're cooking their books, all that stuff. I have a very simple litmus test for this. I look at what the people that have more money than me are doing with their NVIDIA position. And I will look at those people and I'll make a decision on what to do based upon what they're doing. I don't see any of them doing anything about it. The reason I'm bringing it up is that it just happens to be this fervor on NVIDIA, this fervor with Apple and China just happens to be on an extreme light volume week that just happens to lead into Labor Day. I'm not gonna put my tinfoil hat on now, but I've watched these games before. It's much easier to manipulate mega cap names when you don't have all the players home yet, when they stay in the Hamptons. And I know we can all trade remotely, but it just doesn't work that way. 
Okay. People still take off. They still work from home. They're not sitting at their computers all day. So you have this light week where everybody tries to get in that last vacation. And it's just very interesting to me that this is the time that we're going to come out with that. This is the time that we're going to come out with the Apple news right before the iPhone need to get it down so we can get our price off. Very interesting, very convenient for something like that to happen. Again, I'm putting on my tinfoil hat, but, but if I was, that is something that I would look into and think about. But that's just me. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm way off base. Now, we look at where we're at, we get rid of the moving averages, and we just drop in the plane. And then we look at that and you're saying, well, how in the world can you buy that? Well, this is where we were. Do you see that level right in here? Okay. So you're telling me that we can't even take out the low. We can't even take out the low of Apple on news that China's going to bail and there might be other restrictions and we're going to gap down and we can't even take out the low. That's something to think about. Now you start overlaying some indicators and we'll just use the basics to start. We'll start looking at the RSI. So here's my daily RSI and this is roughly where I was when we were down here. And this time I couldn't even get anywhere down there. Well, that's interesting. All right, so I couldn't even get close to where we, we almost were. Now, that's not a divergence, but it's interesting, but that's as far as the RSI would come down today and we didn't get some straight kind of panic. So that's, that's another little sign for me. We'll get into the hourly off the open and then how we played it. But I just wanna point some things out. Number two, that is very important. Look at this, look what I just highlighted. Look at that gap up and look at what's going on there. Look at this gap and look at what's going on there. I think that's a really important distinction. Look at this volume and, and that's out of nowhere on a light volume day. It sure looks to me like somebody was waiting in the wings to buy that, doesn't it? I mean, that's a heck of a lot of volume to just come out of nowhere on a weak day, isn't it? And then you come across and just, let's just drop a line. Okay, so on one of the lightest volume days that we've ever had, we just happened to do, I don't know, the third, second or third highest volume that we've had all year today that just happens to coincide with next week and having that iPhone meeting. But I'm not going to put my tinfoil hat on. But if I was, I find that very interesting. So we actually covered the short and went long today. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. The other thing that I looked at today that I thought was really very interesting was this. We're going to get rid of the pre and the post for a minute. Uh, when you get down on these readings, and I know people say, well, you can't really use RSI. Look, I, I use it all the time. This was glaring to me that we were going to come in and had the possibility of cracking. That's exactly what happened. I, th this move was extreme, and I'm going to explain the position and everything in a second here. But what you're going to see here is exactly this. Look at that move. You got a 14 on an hourly, and you're not going to tell me that that doesn't mean something? It doesn't mean that you're definitely going to go up, but it sure means, like when you're down here, it sure does mean that you're going to go sideways, worst case. And that's exactly what happened until it worked it off. It got to that 50 and then came down and then just look what happened. Gap down, very similar, isn't it? To what happened here, gap, they gap you down. Something to think about guys. So you wanna look at these extreme readings for what they are. To me, if we sat here and looked at a four hour and just drilled into this, it is very hard to look at this and to look at that volume and to not just take a step back. And I'm just gonna drop that in again right there so that you can kind of see what we're looking at here, okay? As far as four hour volume, you don't even have anything even close to it. Do you think somebody was buying off the open? There's nothing even close. I'm back two years. You'd have to go to the pandemic to even find anything close to, to what we just experienced today. Again, I'm not putting on my tinfoil hat, but if I was, it's kind of interesting that today's the day where they just had to get in. And when could you get off the most supply? When, when could you get off and find the most supply to fill your demand? Well, when there's panic in the air. That's exactly what happened today. So one of the things that we did off the open was we had a game plan when we came in. So this is one of the rooms in the community. And I just want to point this out. In this case, this is John typing as I'm just trading live. And I'm setting up the day already. And what I'm saying here at 9.08 in the morning is, Apple, the first uptick, I'm closing 100% of the puts on the first bar. I'm not waiting around. This is exactly what we're telling. We do not wait to short in a down market. You're not going to make money. It's very difficult. Now we were just talking about Dell and you could see good morning, the private video, the private live video. And then we just kind of get into the day and we start setting it up again. Apple, 925. I'm looking to close or trim the short with a tight stop loss and then open long position. And then this is just the rest. 929, right off the open, I'm going to close the trade immediately. I could already tell what was happening pre-market by looking at it, and then I'm gonna go long. That's my plan. And also buying the 175 calls plus stock. 9.30, boom, I'm out. Covered the puts, I'm out. 9.30, long the 175, long stock. Blew the calls out when I lost the calls within what, one minute? 
The calls didn't work the first time. I got out of those 175s and I bought them back later. And then we added more Apple and then we bought the calls back and then I already trimmed some of them. And then we bought, we went out and we bought another strike. I think we went out and bought the 180s in here. Some other names we bought like Intel today. But the point is, and what I want you to get from all of this is when I came in on the day, I had a game plan and that game plan allowed me to execute because I already had all my levels marked. Now, what I'm showing you is rare, like single digits rare. It does not happen very often. It doesn't really get much better than this candidly. You go home, we bought these at the close. I showed you that actually that timestamp yesterday so you could see the timestamp. And I came in this morning and I sold at the open, okay? You don't get this that often. It's not gonna happen. It's, it's a ridiculous return. And you don't build a system around. But when you get something like this, you take it. I don't need this. This this percentage return is absolutely insane. I think I paid 50 cents for them, 45 cents, and we were getting out close to five bucks. I mean, it's just, it's insane. So you just take it and you moved on with your day. Now, with that said, why was I able to do this and not get caught up in the froth that it's gonna go to 170? Because I had all my levels marked off. The trade's already done. Listen to what I'm saying. The trade's already done before it's executed. I hope that makes sense. You know, comment below, but I really think doing videos like that where I work the, tra the actual trade in ahead is extremely helpful to people so that you can actually see live trades with live timestamps and so you get it. And it it's not every trade that works. I mean, I did meta today, it did not work. Yeah, of course, they came out with some news in the EU the moment I go along it. But I, I, we we're going to review that as well. We're going to review NVIDIA and what's happening there. But what I want to point out is here's, here's Apple. The moment that my trade, and this is what I'm saying, this one minute that went in my favor, I'm not waiting around. I'm out because it upticked and gave me that wick right there. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is really important. So you probably want to watch this again. As soon as I got that wick, opens, gives me a wick, reverses, gives me the flim flam and drops. Could I have gotten more money? Sure. You want to fight over five or six dollar print when you're in at 40 cents. So as soon as I cracked here, I'm out of the calls. Boom. Drop reverses. Anybody know this pattern? You sure know this pattern. If you've been watching those candlestick videos I did about a year and a half ago, one, two, three down encompasses right here. It's called the bullish homing pigeon reverses. Boom. Right back up. Flips the open. There it is. So this is where we started scaling into the stock. We were, I, I bought stock off the open, stayed in it because we were so over. I mean, this, this is just ridiculous readings, guys. I know people say like, oh, RSI doesn't work. Uh, okay. But I give it more than a week. So if you look at this and you see how we start flipping, just start scaling into it. And that's what we, that's what we did. We did quite well with the options. We did quite well with the stock. Please comment below. I think it's very helpful to do it that way instead of me showing you like, you know, a cheesy dollar amount I made. I, I don't think that that's the way to, to do this. I think it's a way to stroke my ego, which is not why I'm doing this. So you can see where we're at now. I have a hard time thinking that we're just gonna roll over. But as somebody that is long the stock, I have to have a game plan. If I take out that low, I have a problem. If we take out that low, we have a problem. And we'll see how we do tomorrow. I don't see it with this kind of volume, but weirder things have happened, have, haven't they? So I have to be vigilant and I have to have a plan. So now you know how I'm viewing the world right now on Apple. Let's go through a couple other names here that are just glaring. So a firm I got out on these wicks up here scared me. These drops and buys, look guys, we just gotta be real honest about what's happening with a firm here is I, the majority of my position, candidly, I'm out. I'm gonna be real candid here. This was earnings, Goldman coming out saying they like it, put a $16 target price on it, which still shocked me that they upgraded the, the darn thing. I've got one red bar since earnings, one. That tells you everything you need to know. This thing's under massive accumulation. If you go here and take a look, look at that volume. Look how green that volume is. Isn't it pretty? You have one red bar. But I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy what's going on there. So if you're in, you're in, congratulations. But I think that's worth covering. And there you have this where we're just seeing like this steady, large cap growth names. We're seeing bids today and we're starting to see that. Dow got a massive downgrade today. Uh, by Barclay, $50 target price hardly dropped. Uh, Intel's another one that we're up about a little over a buck on and we've been playing with since they came out with the AI chip. Really important distinction here I want people to take away from today. Look at that volume. Your volume's getting stronger, it's not getting weaker. Your volume's getting stronger on Intel, it's not getting weaker. Uh, AI is not, you know, this huge scam that people on the internet seem to think that it is. Try not to laugh. but. You know, maybe start looking at the company that's trading at a huge discount to its ca to its cash flow and might have a new income stream. We went through this before in like the 90s. I'm dating myself again with, you know, the 386 chip and the 486 chip. And you guys all remember this if you're you know around my age. But these cycles are huge and they go on for years. 
So this is a really interesting one to take a look at. Uh, Meta looked like it was going to break out. I want to cover this. Uh, this is something I went live today and it just, it just really didn't work. I wound up having to close a portion. Uh, huge wick sitting there, no decision made, all whacked in there. We broke out. We broke out on the hourly too. I mean, it was a, just a beautiful chart right here. Broke out on the hourly and then they gave us this bar. It was beautiful. And then the doji and then the, the bar of pain, no other way to refer to it. I have a control bar up here at 304 with that being your resistance, something to look at. Let's get to NVIDIA. I find this absolutely fascinating. So I think we're going to spend a little time here. So first and foremost, I'm going to just clear off the 12 for a minute. And we're going to talk about the 22. You noticed how we can't break the 22. Tests, bounces, tests, bounces, bounces. Ever since earnings, someone's buying the 22. You could say it's the 20. I, I don't really care. I'm not going to split hairs but opens easily could have tested the 55 today. Nobody would have blamed it. I, you know, high PE, negative sediment, um, you know, people trying to talk about, you know, this, the company selling product to itself, all this nonsense, right? It could have had way more sediment, way more problems today. It closed at the high, right near the high, didn't it? And look at, look at these patterns. And I think that these patterns are really telling. Let's clean this off and let's drop this down and get into this. So these patterns to me are really telling. Here you are all day, accumulation, 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 breakout. It, it didn't get any cleaner. We had a nice day trade in this at the end of the day, but it doesn't really get any cleaner than that. And you can see your trend line. Well, maybe you can't. So you can kind of see these trend lines right here, right? Got a couple really weird ones just hanging in there, don't you? Like this, it's kind of getting wider. I could probably draw that better. We'll do it another time. Do it this weekend, we'll get in there. But you can see your lines, you can see your demarcation lines. And what's crazy about your demarcations lines is 657 or 457, let me drop a line. See that right there? Bonk, breaks, the, breaks what? Your 22, where's it hold? Your 55, that's what these levels are. 22, 22, 22. I mean, you, you can't make this up, guys. You, you can't make this up. So uh, this is definitely something I'd be paying attention to. And I watch that level real carefully. You're not able to break it. Uh, a couple other these I really wanna focus on, Tesla. Yeah, you got filled. This could have been a disaster today, guys. It was not, okay? It was not a disaster. And we went through this yesterday, but I'm gonna go through it again. Uh, you're really wedged in here and they're really just playing badminton with you. So it, you know, it's one of those things, if you ever heard the saying, smoke them if you got them, meaning that, look, you only have so much time when you're in this trade, okay? Once you're in that trade, you're just gotta, you just gotta lock it in and move on with your life and not get attached. And I think it's worth spending the time on and looking at these. Other than that, there are a bunch of other, other names out there. I don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time on them. What I would do is I would look at tomorrow and see which names follow through and which names don't follow through. I do like the large cap right now because they present huge opportunity and we are seeing that divergence. Uh, let me clean all this off. XLC, we are seeing the divergence with XLC staying above the 55 and the SOX has broken the 55. It cannot get above the 500. So if I had to tell you where we're leading, XLC is leading. That's it. 